Welcome to the fifth redesign blab. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, design, of course, but um, kind of an interesting uh, issue uh, because there's two ways of lo looking at it. Are we in a design renaissance or in a design crisis? Um, personally, I could probably make equal arguments either way, which is why, <laughs> why I think the question exists and why I thought this topic might be an interesting one. And maybe we can, you know, end up with some sort of, uh, hopefully, end on a positive note and balance them out and see where we see our, see where we lie. So, uh, who wants to jump in and um, add a thought to get started here? Well, I had a thought. Uh, I was thinking about this this morning, and it's interesting to me because it seems like if there is a design crisis, which I'd be willing to say that there is, it's actually been spurred by an increase in demand for design, it seems to me. Because if you think about it, you know, a lot of these problems that we're seeing are because everybody needs a website, everybody feels like they need, you know, visual content for their brand and stuff like that. So it, that's great in the sense that people are probably paying more attention to design that maybe didn't think about it before. But at the same time, that's created this sort of crisis situation where we have this, you know, influx of the do-it-yourself style and the all these you know silly tips about oh make your buttons this specific color no matter what and all that kind of stuff so it's sort of a double-edged sword but it, i do think that's worth exploring the idea that it's a result of an increase in demand and you might say like uh you know um there's just so much out there it's sort of like an overabundance of design needs leads right. to Lack of right, and, it, and it's not necessarily the type of need that most of us are used to meeting. It's not, you know, most people are not going to hire a designer specifically for, you know, blog images. That's just not, you know, profitable for anybody in, in the equation. So it's, it's sort of opened up this weird niche market that I don't really know how to fulfill that need because it's not a, worth a professional's time to just do that. But then again, a business owner probably shouldn't be going the do-it-yourself route without consulting a designer at all. So it's a tough one. Yeah. Well, what about, yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand. It's a valid case, I think, Catherine. But what about if, so when I was a marketing manager, we took our design direction from, the design team and then so they set the, the direction so I think that's what small businesses and bloggers should do is at least let the designer set the direction um, right. and the guidelines and you stick to that guidelines and I know they need a little bit more help than that because they need to make photos and visuals for every post and that and that's a lot but maybe just consult with someone to help them guide them through that rather than to the um, take the course to become a designer and get you know something like that which doesn't really work although they think that's going to work but i don't think it really works like that yeah i think the world would be a much better place if people just stuck to what they're good at and to what their focus is supposed to be instead of yeah. trying to be you know everything to all people including a designer now all of a sudden just because you know it might happen to have well it used to be powerpoint now it's all these other freebie tools that you can see online but everybody you know as soon as they had these tools on their desktop believed they could design the way a designer could so i'm not saying everybody i did say everybody but you know what i mean by yeah. and large that was a trend as soon as desktop publishing hit um there was a big uh change in the way design is perceived it used to be something that was almost like magic to people they didn't really know how designers created things and how they got things onto a printed page. Um, but that all changed with the desktop revolution, which might be be might be prior to your time, Catherine. But uh, <laughs> it was. It was for sure. But just going back in history a little bit. Um, because uh, you know, it's hard, it's hard because are we talking about companies? Are we talking about the larger companies, smaller ones? Are we talking about the DIY crowd and solo, you know, entrepreneurs? I mean, you know, there's different um, different facets of maybe the same uh, challenges, you know, at all those niche, niches. So, um, yeah, 
Uh, I think you're all right so far. Andrew, what do you have to say so far on this? Um, so far, I mean, this particular subject about uh, people having a go themselves, I guess technology is a great leveler. Um, and when new technology comes around, it makes it easier to do things. It used to be a very specialist skill and people all start having a go. Um, but I think if you stick around long enough and wait for the newness to wear off, you know, quality shows through. Yeah. People who are, who are good at design, the people who know how to use that tool to produce something effective, uh, you know, will keep going and will shine through in the end. And you just kind of got to have faith if you are a designer, but that's what's going to happen. I think it's a, you know, I think it's an interesting argument because I imagine if you were go back, uh, you know, kind of 30 odd years um, to, to the age of uh, kind of photo typesetting, you know, a graphic designer would never dream of laying out all the type in a large document. That was a specialist job that was done by a person with specialist training. Um, whereas nowadays, somebody with a copy of Adobe InDesign can lay out a, a humongous booklet and do it themselves on their computer and never have to leave their, their studio. Um, technology does, unfortunately, make some jobs defunct. But I think when it comes to design, the ability to distill information and present it in a way that communicates to your target audience is always going to be a skill that uh, that in the end will show through beyond the technology yeah absolutely would you say yeah. that there's more need for that kind of work now or less need because uh, obviously there's different levels of design too which is mm. another reason why this is a little bit difficult to talk about because you know there's different absolutely yeah people in different kinds of companies or different business situations but there's also different levels of design you know there is the high-end design market the branding mm. market and then there's the lower end you know mm. uh people working you know out of their homes and you know the uh, mommy type of bloggers yeah. and you know all types of people in between so um, yeah. It's it's interesting. I was having a chat with a designer today. We met up for a for a cup of tea and a chat, and um, we were discussing something along a similar line. And I said, "How I, I don't understand. There are companies in the local area that advertise complete websites for ninety nine pounds. That's about a hundred and fifty odd dollars." Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> exactly, Catherine. Exactly. Um, and I said, I just don't understand how they do it. Because to me, because the way I work, if somebody asked me to put together a website for them, I think by the time I've sat down with them, gone through and got to a stage where I'm confident that I fully understand all of their requirements, I would barely be making minimum wage. Yeah. And yeah. I've not even got down to sitting wow. down and working out the website. So um, there's websites and there's websites. There's logos and then there's logos. You know, there's brochures and then there's brochures. I mean, it's like, you know, again, it's yeah. like apples and oranges. But I said at the end of the day, and not wanting to sound like a design snob, looking at the output of these companies, I don't consider them my competition. Right. I would like to think the kind of client I'm appealing to will look at their websites, will look at something I produce and would see the difference, would see how it's, it's working harder for the client, how it's, uh, you know, more results driven, less of a, you know, off the shelf template design. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I'm also aware that that kind of design has its place and that there are people who don't put value on something like that and yeah. would be quite happy with a, with a quick, cheap solution that just gets them online and, and rank it on Google. And it's got its place, and, and you know, it's not my place to judge, but at the end right. of the day, that's not what I'm interested in doing. Right. So as a professional designer, uh, Andrew, would you say that uh, there's more opportunity for doing good design now or less opportunity from, let's say, a decade ago? I, th I would say, I would say, I'm going to be incredibly diplomatic here and not exactly answer the question. I would say there is more opportunity to educate your clients uh, about the value of good design. That's what I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. I think it's, it's up to us and all the marketers out there in the world because to, to educate people on the value. And so we've got we've got those of us who do our own thing. We have to educate our clients. But if you're on a marketing team, you have to educate leadership because you have the same challenges, right? You. Mm -hmm. They control your budget, <laughs> so you have to educate them on the value of design. It's, it's but I would say that one of the forces against good uh, against good work there is that um, 
you know, uh, they don't always understand what good design is, or there's so many other forces out there or promotions out there that are working against us. You know, all these uh, cheap $5 sites, let's say, or, you know, uh, tools that promote you too can be a professional designer overnight and all these different things with these huge marketing, uh, these, these budgets that blow us out of the water. So, so how, how do you get, you know, a client to listen to you, you know, the little guy over these big, you know, corporate entities that are now working against good design? I mean, we, we've had, we've encountered that at my job. Um, and it's a big challenge, especially for our print department, because, you know, we, we have a lot of people that just aren't aware of, uh, especially the specs in print. And, uh, I was actually talking to, you know, them about this a couple of days ago. And, you know, I mean, my feeling is, um, let them try those $5 solutions and ruin their postcards. Right. You know? Because some, sometimes it's it, it's like the tough love thing in psychology where, you know, you have to let people make mistakes before they see the error of their ways. And, you know, yeah, you can you can go ahead and you can use that, you know, fiber guide. If you have the time to wait for them to come around, you know, sometimes I think you'll be old and gray before that day ever happens with some of those <laughs> folks. So it's, yeah. No, that's, there, I mean, I, I've had, you know, clients that I've worked with for 20 years and still you know, after all the quote unquote educating and all the discussions and all the, you know, work that they praise and you think they finally kind of understand. And then you'll see them just like turn around and say something or do something that is at total odds with what we've been discussing for the last 20 years. Right. These are smart, you know, like senior executive type people, vice presidents, who, whomever. It's not a question of intelligence, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just like a mindset or something. And it's really hard to break through to, I'd say, most people when it comes to explaining good design and really getting them to understand the value. Um, I think the other thing that, uh, when I think of a design crisis, I think of the implementation sometimes of design. So for example, you can have some nice photos for your social sharing, right? For social posts. But if you're not, if you don't, you don't have the technology that can share your posts so it looks good, then you have a design crisis, right? Because it looks like crap, but you have this nice design. So that's the other thing I think people are are missing with design. Like, um, how are they implementing it? You know, like if they have a really nice design for their website and it's not search, it's not good for search engines and search engine marketing is part of their marketing plan, then they're shooting themselves in the foot. So I think people that are making decisions even if you have a professional person do your design, you also have to make a decision of how you're going to use it and the technology that you're going to be using to have it all um, be presented to your your target audience and make sure that it all works together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what are some forces that you think are working for good? you know, good work these days. Um, if you had to list a few of those, what would you say? I think Andrew already touched on one of them, the fact that, you know, we're inundated with bad design on our social feeds every single day. Uh, I think that does, you know, help good work stand out because, I mean, yeah, it's a double-edged sword because it also drowns out, you know, becomes noise and people pay less attention because there's so much bad stuff out there. But at the same time, I think it's a little bit easier for somebody who doesn't have design knowledge and experience to just look at something and say, wow, that's, um, that's pretty bad, you know? So you're saying that, that the bad work is driving the good work or? <laughs> well, I think, I think the work? bad work just makes the good work stand out more. Right, and, highlights the good work, okay. Right, it highlights it and it's a great point of contrast for you know client education or something like that where you can say hey look you know this is this is the result of you know going it your own way with no education or experience is mm -hmm. that how you want to represent your brand you know <laughs> well i think Catherine has a good point of the the um client education piece because this week i saw a really good example of mm -hmm. someone who did the same thing with content like they took a landing page and they just went through it 
with a with a prospect and they tried to educate the prospect on okay this isn't really highlighting uh, what it's good how it helps your audience it's really highlighting how great you are right so i almost think we have to do that with design you have to take <clears throat> the design and you actually have to mark it up and say look at what this is doing and this is really what it's communicating to your mm -hmm. audience or it's missing the point here or it's unprofessional here you know like we actually have to like break it down into tangible pieces that they might be able to understand mm. um, right. as part of a as part of an education you know and the education can be all kinds of things i mean it could be yeah. a one-on-one -on -one or it could be a presentation at a group of some kind or a networking event of some kind um so it it can be a little bit of a broader education as well i mean i think I think we're, it's like swimming upstream, but I think if more voices join in the swim, you know, it's going to be easier to get the message out there that this isn't really good design and, and here's why, you know. Right. You know, Andrew also spoke about how tech uh, has added a lot of direct, let's say, over the years, you know, because once everybody has the tools in front of them, you know, they feel they can, that they're able to uh go out and do the work themselves. But I think tech has also added a lot of opportunities for for design, you know. Um, obviously, you know, the, the whole web revolution um, has spawned all these other digital, you know, offshoots, whether it be apps or digital marketing, you know, all these different things that we get involved in now. Um, so there's a lot more uh, maybe touch points, you know, that designers can design for than there used to be. So print hasn't really gone away. It might have did, it might have slowed down a bit, but uh, you know, we still have print, and now we have all these other possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, and also now these new immersive and uh, immersive experiences and things like that. And you know, maybe we're moving now into like a virtual reality sort of future, also. You know, where we can create these really dynamic, uh, um, all inclusive. You know, and immersive experiences those have also i think now added to our palette so to speak where yeah. uh designers can design for even more things now so mm -hmm. but i think there's it's pluses and minuses to everything i think it's interesting that you mentioned print paul because i i'm pretty sure i'm starting to see a trend at least in the uk and probably elsewhere where prints starting to come back a little bit and companies are starting to realize if you want to make yeah. more impact yeah. They're maybe printing less, but what they are printing is is right. kind of higher quality, um, and realizing they can only get that connection on more levels with their client if they're actually holding something tangible in their hand and looking at it. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's it's definitely something that's starting to happen people. here. Yeah, yeah, they've it is. done studies too that proves that people psychologically just feel it's more real, you know, and more yeah. more, more important if it's in print. Do you uh, do you order much print, Paul? I love print. I don't do nearly as much as I used to. I would love to do more, and I I, I think it's great. And, and when you get a fresh batch a of print, time. when you get a fresh batch of print turn up back from the printers, it's the first thing you do: stick your nose in the box and take a deep sniff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, we all do it. Yeah, we all do it because there's nothing like the smell of fresh print. Well, but you know, isn't it a channel that's quieting down? Right, like. If it's a, getting to be a quieter channel, then I think you can probably make better traction in it, in it than mm -hmm. social media, which is just overcrowded. Yeah, so, yeah. I, don't, I think print stands out more now than it ever yeah, did. Exactly. You know? I, I really more don't. effective now because no one is doing it. <laughs> you know, um, we I mean, obviously, we do a lot of print because I work for a real estate firm, but um, we had a guy come in and they have a special, you know, promotional magazine that agents can send to their clients. And it's they, they kept saying that this is like a gift that you're giving to clients because it's not about real estate. It's about, you know, fashion and culture and recipes and all this type of stuff. And the in, inside page is a kind of like a variable data piece where the agent can put the name of the client and stuff like that. And the agents that we have who've used that and, you know, we're particular in the luxury market get a fantastic response. We had an agent that said she's had three sales based on that. And they were clients that she worked with, you know, 20 years ago and sending that magazine kept her in the top of their mind. So I think there's less of this type of crisis um, in like the luxury markets because 
number one, there's the budget issue, but number two, I think people in those in the upper echelon understand that print is going to be your best touch point, you know, mm -hmm. so. And it's true, I think, that the quality matters more than ever because, uh, yeah. you know, it's not just your average everyday print that stands out. It's the print that maybe has an interesting die cut or a concept that right. really works great or um, something tactile about the paper, you know, that really stands out. Um, mm -hmm. Hillary uh, Steele over here on the side talks about the smell of print. Uh, Andrew touched <laughs> on that, too. Yep. <laughs> so it's tactile to the nose, too. It is. It is. It, it excites is. many senses. <laughs> yeah. I always love, you know, I, I've always, uh, I've done a lot over the years with spot varnishes, matte gloss effects, um, things like that. Mm. Uh, I think the key there is doing it in a way that's classy and not like um, overdone glitzy, yeah. you know, because that gets really tacky looking. Yeah. But I think yeah. if you can bring those subtleties in, then it really stands out. The Sorry. Public clearinghouse stuff. I used to work for a printer who printed that. That stuff's awful. Yeah, if it's overdone, it looks yeah, awful. And most people right overdo it. They'll use like a spot lamb or something instead of a varnish. Yeah, and it used to be you'd buy a magazine and it was stuffed full of tipped in kind of oh, GSM oh, glossy yeah. single page A5 things that just fall out when you open it and go all over the floor. It's terrible. Let me show you this. I just picked this up the other day. It's a brochure from an art school here in the city. How does it smell? Because my son now is looking at schools. Look what happens when you open it up, right? So it kind of like reveals itself. And then. Nice. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Very cool. Isn't that neat? And yeah. each, each segment, each section, you know, is designed. Uh, so it makes sense. You know, it, it, each section kind of like it defines the content in that space. So, you know, that's a nicely done die cut, a nicely done fold thing. Um, but again, you see so much tacky stuff that's just has no rhyme or reason. All they're doing is throwing in an effect, just like yeah. a movie in Hollywood, you know, where the effects really work or the effects are just totally overblown and it makes no sense and gets in the way of the story and, you know, defeats the whole purpose of the film. So this relates to everything. But, um, you know, it's how it's done. And it's good designers that will get it done right. So. So what, what else is working for good design? What other forces out there are actually maybe helping the industry? I think um, collaborative communities where designers come together and they um, talk about design and they compare their work and they positively critique each other. And I think that's helping designers. Um, that's a good point, yeah. Doing. I mean, and it's a lot easier to like follow a good designer, right? And see what they're doing and yeah. listen that's to what, point. you know, I think, that whole thing is helping everybody. So kind of like educating ourselves and like coming yeah. together as a group and being able to, you know, talk almost on a daily kind of basis and uh, bounce things off each other and uh, yeah. learn from each other's writings too and the blogs that we put out there and all that. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I think that's totally right. You know, I mean, personally, I've learned a lot just by following other designers and artists on Instagram. Yeah, you know, yeah. Look at what they're doing and, you know, that inspiring me. And, you know, it's like seeing this thing, seeing little reminders, like, you know, another designer posts something about kerning and all of a sudden you go, wow, you know, it's, that they're so right. I really need to pay attention to that more, you know, stuff like that. But you're totally right. That didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago. And it's totally pushing us forward because we're talking about this on social media then people that are not in design are going to see that. Right. And hopefully that's going to make an impression. I see and that's more. That's so powerful. That's, that's huge. I mean, we are sharing, you know, stuff that really gets us off, you know, with each other and <laughs> turning each other onto, yeah. onto, you know, websites and design resources and stuff that we didn't know about, you know, or uh, samples of work that we find incredible, stuff we would never know about otherwise. Right. And it right. motivates me to take on something new. You know, like I picked up a few things just from the design community. You guys have showed me some great sites, and I'm like, wow, I'm gonna figure out how to do that. I like that. So I go out and do it. You know, I'm like I like it. It's classy. So it's helped me. Well, watch out for the copyright, you know, law now too. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, not scraping, but designing. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, Listen, guys, I got to jump off. 
Um, hopefully oh, okay, else Mary. Well, thanks for jumping in. Thanks a thanks. lot. Thanks. Good to speak again, Mary. Cheers. Thanks <laughs> for your input. All right, so who wants to jump in? Craig, I don't Craig. know if you're feeling up to it, but uh, right. you have an open seat. Um, if not, you know, maybe somebody else wants Anyone to join else? us. Yeah. Um, I think too, though, you know, like you were saying earlier, Catherine, that there's just such a huge amount of, of need out there or people that think they need design, right? And there's mm -hmm. uh, a glut of design. So, um, but also there's more opportunities than ever too, I think, because of that too. You know, everyone needs a logo they feel, um, whether they yeah. go to Fiverr or whether they go to a good designer is another question. But, um, you know, there's more opportunity maybe there to brand things um or more more opportunity there to help show them the show them how how to do it or to create the guidelines that maybe they can follow through you know establishing kind of like a design brand image um and uh a brand identity um there's also amazing professional tools you know out there now um in fact i just came across one today that believe it or not you, you know i'm never one to really push the tools much because I think there's a lot more important things to talk about when it comes to good design, mm -hmm. which doesn't really start with the tool, but it starts with, you know, your skills and your um, research and your brand uh, experience, branding experience and things like that. But, um, but uh, there is a new tool out that I just saw. Um, and I would say it gives Canva a run for its money because it's got a mm -hmm. lot more uh specific uh controls that a good designer really needs you know to do good work um so it looks really interesting and it's, it's coming out of germany hmm. um let me just check a second what that name is i will be right back i forget it's called gravit or gravit i'm not really sure how to say it well it's german so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's German, so you need to shout louder. Exactly. Have you heard of it or seen it? Oh, I haven't actually. I was just fooling around with it for a little bit, and uh, it looks pretty interesting. So there's definitely new things out there, and you know, it's a free tool. It's available online, and it's got a lot of the same things that you would do in Photoshop. Um, and it's really building things from, from from scratch too. You know, it's not like all these preformed designs yeah. and templates that you just like you know, spin around and change the color on or whatever. It's mm -hmm. really creating something from scratch, which I think is the key. So yeah. anyway, there's, you know, all kinds of things out there that help us also as designers, I think. Um, and we're also able to do much more work now in less time, right, than we ever yeah. used to do. Now that also has its own pros and cons. Craig oh, here, yeah. you know, Craig Clint claims he's not hung over he's working late late at night so <laughs> that could be uh that could be why you know um, we all know new people are expecting no more work, work and less, less time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all know what's really going on in new zealand oh they, they've been partying hard since last week yeah <laughs> uh so um let's see what else i have a list here on the side actually i'm referencing um there's more typefaces than ever. There's textures. There's all these different, uh, you know, resources that we can tap into also, you know, that expand our design uh, palette. The typefaces um, thing is interesting, Paul. I was thinking about this earlier. Um, yeah. There's loads of typefaces out there. But actually, there's loads of really high-quality typefaces getting out there that are open source. Um, I can think of, you know, Adobe Source Sans Pro, Fire mm -hmm. Sans, you know, I can't believe that a, that a typeface and a range of typefaces like that designed by Eric Speakerman is now available for everyone to use for free. It's an amazing right. typeface. It's beautiful. Um, and I've just geeked out over type on Blab. But, um, you know, there's loads of really high quality font families now, available to buy. The one you were talking to get about free. that's available from Eric Speakerman, uh, mm. I mean, is that the original cut or is it like a a second rate cut or fire sounds um eric spiegman was commissioned by firefox to design it for their um os right when they, when they were started launching mobile oh, phones okay. for okay but it was released under an open source license yeah okay right i've That's got it too bad. i just wasn't sure mm. but um 
I mean, it used to matter like what type house you bought a font from, you know, because the cuts vary mm. and all that stuff. Mm. I'm not really clear on how that works anymore these days, or if anyone even cares. But Craig yeah, has yeah, pointed out there are really also many crappy type faces. So, yeah, there's bastardized versions of the same fonts, you know. That, that I've encountered. I, I yeah. know that. And, and the kerning pairs aren't set up right. So, you know, it, it really looks awful if you start to enlarge the type where the kerning or yes. lack thereof becomes mm -hmm. really apparent, you know. Now, I, I really don't know anymore these days where that stuff stands with these new typefaces that are out there. That's why, you know, I'm kind of asking about that one. But, um, do you have a handle on that at all, Andrew? Or uh, a handle on what particular? Sorry. Are are there any specific, you know, um, resources where we should buy the fonts from over others because mm. the cut is different or the way it's crafted is just slightly different? For the, I mean, obviously for the for the open source typefaces I was referring to, it, it's not going to make any difference because everybody can kind of distribute them. As they want, Craig's just uh, recommending myfonts.com over right. in the discussion mm -hmm. over in yeah, the uh, side panel. Um, Craig says a lot of them look, look like crap once you once you actually use them. They, a lot they of free, you know, they look good online yeah. and you use them, and they don't. Yeah, yeah, no, that's something a lot of people. You know, we, you want to talk about a crisis? People not understanding that the ultra thin type <laughs> is not going to cut it in print. Right. You know, things like that. Well, it doesn't cut it online either, you know, especially. Well, if you yeah. It's, it, if it's tough to read on a screen, forget about inking it, you know? Yeah. And well, I've always stuck to the, you know, the real classic faces overall because I like my design. Uh, let's see. The way like I put a design it. together overall to drive a design, not the font itself or the typeface itself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the typeface, if it gets too fancy, it kind of dominates your design. A lot of people just design that way. They'll use a fancy font and call it a day, you know, but I don't, I've never been like that. So you're very much in the uh, in the Massimo Vignelli school of uh, well, I'm not squaring quite yourself to find green, typefaces. Leaning in that direction, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, Helvetica I hate, by the way. <laughs> I hate Helvetica. What, I just because it's overused? Or? Universe or Franklin Gothic or, you know. Accidents, grotesque, those kinds of faces. Futura, mm -hmm. even. But uh, and some of the newer ones too that maybe you know are like modern versions of those. Like the some some of the ones that you mentioned, uh, Andrew. You know, those are yeah. just very yeah. you know workable sans serif fonts that you can. I they, think they don't have a lot of adornment. Yeah, it's a really hard work and typeface. I really like it. Which um, one was that? I'm sorry. Adobe Source Sans. Adobe Source Sans. Yeah. Is lovely. Right. And uh, Catherine loves us some Roboto. <laughs> oh, Roboto, <Nice>. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Roboto. <laughs> well, whatever, Craig. You know <laughs> whatever. Craig. No one cares what you think anyway. Tight, fight, tight, fight, tight, fight. <laughs> All right, so let's bitch a little bit now. <laughs> oh, good. Craig is coming in. <laughs> all right, then. there we go. Oh, it's <laughs> all that bitching. Uh huh. Here we go. Let's, all right. So, so what's working? What are the forces that are working against good, good design? Craig, you're on. <laughs> no, don't talk to me. I'm full of a cold. That's good. We want somebody who's really pissed off and not <laughs> feeling well at all. <laughs> this is the bitching. Who's working against right? design. Come on, let's. What are those evil what? forces out there? Five dollar logo sites, you know. No, I I'm, I'm India, uh, um, you know, but <laughs> uh, factories, um, crowdsourcing, the DIY mentality. All right, fine, I'll do it. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you're doing such a good job, Paul. We're just going to leave you to it. I know. Just yeah, keep on going. About these things, all the templates that are out there. You know, the mm -hmm. templated world. How about <laughs> responsive design? Is that limiting us in a lot of ways? Yes, right. Oh, God, no, I couldn't agree with you less. Oh, good. Here we go. We have a debate going. <laughs> I, I think responsive Tell design, me more, Andrew. I think the thing with responsive design where a lot of people go wrong is they try to, I don't know, make it the same on mobile as it is on a laptop screen or on a desktop screen. And uh, they're different experiences. Just treat them as two different problems, and, and you'll be fine. 
as far as I'm concerned, really. Well, does a responsive design, though, sort of make us design in such a way that it's almost modular so that it can just be reconfigured to any screen size? Uh, you know, a complex design or even a simple design that has like a lot of nuances maybe can't be manipulated that easily and maintain the integrity of the original design. No, that's true. That's that's about no, I think that's a valid point. Um, I personally like it when I have, you know, a site that has a seamless experience between desktop and mobile. But you're right it, that it does create a modular look. And that's I'm almost I'm uh, like 99 percent on board that that's contributing to the homogeny that we're seeing in web design right now. So, yeah, it's true that something that's complex cannot be easily just kind of smushed, you know, and scaled down and have it be the same in terms of quality and experience. That's that's a valid point. Yeah. I still like responsive design. <laughs> How about something similar to responsive? It's not responsive, but it's like all the different shapes and sizes maybe on the digital uh, in the digital realm that. Uh, design has to fit like uh, on social media you know you've got mm -hmm. maybe a, a horizontal that works best on facebook and then you've got a vertical that works best on g plus or something and you know yeah. it's got to go from like a square to a horizontal to a vertical and yeah it's kind <laughs> of annoying <laughs> it's annoying it, right it is. you know yeah. it's it's annoying to me especially you know when instagram i used to start everything with a square because i knew it was going to end up on there anyway you know, yeah. and uh, now the square isn't, you know, necessarily the way to go, but it's it's still what looks best on their platform, in my opinion. So I still start with squares, you know, even though I don't really want to design in a square. But, <laughs> you know, right. so, so in that sense, that is limiting because it's like and, you know, everything on right. Pinterest needs to be horizontal orientation, which isn't what I'm going to put on Pinterest my blog. Pinterest is more yeah, vertical. Sorry, vertical, yeah, yeah. My yeah. You know, I mean, there's also a way to design uh, a square and then allow for the cropping out of that, whether it be a vertical or horizontal. But again, that's going to limit the way you design, you know. I mean, there's yeah. just so much you can do to be all sizes to all people, so to speak. It is. You know? And then one size does not really fit all in good no. design. No. <laughs> And when you're trying to tackle that problem of of uh, different sizes, that's when you kind of start thinking about things in a modular way, which is what you were discussing with responsive right. design. You know, because it becomes right. the easiest way to break it down. Well, this bit has to stay together, and and that bit has to stay together. So we'll move back to there, and that to there, and yeah, yeah. What do you think, Craig? Anything nasty to say yet? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Cookie oh, Monster? I was say, I'm totally distracted by the Cookie Monster. <laughs> I love I Cookie Monster. Since our blab, our blab, like three blabs ago or something. <laughs> I like to create depth of meaning to my 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 presentation. So Cookie Monster in the background. Mm -hmm. Big fan of Cookie Monster. Um, I see it. Lots of but, depth there. Yeah, responsive design. I mean, it is what it is, and graphic designers just have to embrace it and go with it and you know we we probably fight with it too much the reality is we've got a phone um some of us have big phones some of us have small phones and we've got tablets and uh then we have to just simply restrict ourselves to what they are we've just got to live with the it they're designed to such a point that one size fits all no matter what shape you know, <laughs> God creates tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a shoe. You know, this this shoe shape is now going to be your profile image. Oh, okay. Now it's got to work in a okay. shoe shape. Right. You do you realize, Paul? You are quite literally raging against the machine, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I am. I don't know. I, don't even, I hardly know that band, but. <laughs> I, I think it's just really, really important that you get the message across as quickly as possible. So uh, whoever your audience is, um, and they're looking at your, and if they're looking at your your content on a phone, uh, on the on your on your website, then you want to get your message point across quickly. And uh, 
and concisely and 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 do it really really well like you know the thing is it's a vertical um stream on a on a mobile you can't really do much with it as a designer yeah, other than all yeah, the content really yeah, well yeah yeah and 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 add some nice images that are applicable to your content and and uh and make it really nice and readable. Use some nice typefaces that 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 are nice and readable. There's plenty out there on Google Font, and uh, and and like I said, on on my fonts and and what have you. So, yeah, just live with it. Suck it in, Paul. All right. And, so, are um, we at a point then where the function has really overtaken every other aspect of design? Where you know the practical matters that we're yeah. talking about. But should it, it, it has has be number one. And you know, design takes a you know third seat now to just pedestrian, utilitarian, whatever, you know, function. <laughs> well, it, it, it still works with it. It's just like in terms of the, the, the form, the, the, the form is very limiting on mobile and, and, and we, we're living in such a mobile age where we just, you know, mobile everything. I mean- So we have um, to think very small too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And, you, know, you know, I mean, when I started in design, it was because I wanted to do posters, these big things that you could hang on walls, oh, yeah. and they're like works of art, but they're, but they're not just like one offs. It's not just like one painting that hangs in a gallery that no one ever sees. We're right. mass producing these so that, you know, thousands of people are seeing our work. How cool is that? You know, now you're telling me that we can only uh, design for something like, like this, right? Especially yeah. on the iPhone. An, an icon. Craig, Craig hates the little iPhone thingies, but, uh, <laughs> That's what design has been reduced to, right? <laughs> well, it has been it, it has been reduced right. to for um, a digital experience, but uh, I, I I get immense proud. Uh, you know, I feel really really proud when I see, you know, my logos on a on a sign, or uh, or on a uniform, and yeah. uh, and and they represent so much. Um, you know that. Like I said, that sense of pride for the, that that, that um, individuals in a company, or in my case, schools have in the organisation. Um, so, so for mobile ex and digital experience, yes, um, we're limited. We just have to suck it in and live with it. But for um, for the real world, which I love to call it, because social media is such a bubble and such a hyper reality. And, and in some cases, just totally nonsensical when it comes to to design sensibility. Now you've got me really going because I'm just grumpy with this Dan Cole. I love it. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. I'm just sitting back enjoying this. Go on. <laughs> go, um, go. Yeah, yeah. We, we just need to kind of like take a chill pill, step back from social media and go, hey, you know, there's a lot of crap out there. Um but there's so much going, great stuff going on in the real world with some amazing design agencies and studios out there that are doing some fantastic work. Yeah. And there is still a, a um, um, most of our experience with brands is, is touching, is a tactile yeah. experience. It's not a digital experience. We might use it, use our, our phones and our tablets and our computers before we purchase. You know, there's proof of that to a certain extent, but most of our experience is tactile, I believe, yeah. and 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 we uh, we experience design with our with our eyes um, in a in a real world sense when we we touch brands when we go and meet them face to face. I I, I think you know that's that for me is exciting. I don't think I think design graphic design is really going ahead. There's lots of exciting stuff happening in my own local community. Um, and we just need to focus on that. There's lots of negativity on on online. We you know we see a lot of crappy design on right. social media and everything. And I think that 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 it's because it's such a uh, an open uh, platform where we you know we're connected. We're so connected digitally um, that we tend to lose focus of the amazing stuff that's happening um, beyond social media um, because we're so connected to it ourselves personally. Yeah. Well, I was hoping we would, you know, we're, we're, we're down to our last 10 minutes now. And I was hoping that we'd get to a real positive ending here because I agree with you, Craig, um, as bitchy as you started out, you ended up quite uh, <laughs> positive. And I, I agree. I think it, there's never been a more 
exciting time to be a to be a designer. You know, we've had hills and valleys, and we're going to keep having those and all. Um, and there's trends that come come and go, and some of them are kind of exasperating, I suppose. But I also do think that print, you know, is coming around again. And I think that you know, digital is not the new, you know, shiny happy thing on the block anymore. It's part of life. And why did we have to throw the baby out with the bathwater? I mean, why? Why did we have to ever lose print? You know, I don't think so. I think, you know, print has attributes that the digital world will never have, like you you were saying. And um, I think that's going to come around again. Um, and I think there's probably new things out there that we haven't even thought of yet that are going to be happening as well. And virtual reality is a whole new thing. And just the fact that we're talking now on social media like this instead of texting, you know, maybe the video realm or maybe the way we relate more one-on-one -on -one in real person in in real life you know like this uh will open up new opportunities also as as we move forward but there's never been so many opportunities to design for you know as there are now so but because of that there's a lot of crap too so like yeah. um and you know what craig i mean back in the print days when everyone was doing print no one said, oh, man, I want to be a matchbook designer, you know, and design like really small or a postage stamp de de designer and, and design really small. So the fact that now we're, you know, pigeonholed by this mobile device and everything has to be tiny. I mean, we got to get out of that, too. You know what I mean? I mean, the world's expansive. We're expansive. Our ideas are huge. I think we also need a, a platform that, uh, that um, takes advantage of that. Look, if you if you ask my printer, um, he'd tell you that I've never um, done so much printing. You know, um, what kind of printing is it though? Is it mass produced, like uh, direct mail stuff? That's um, the, no. Yeah. Well, well, it, uh, it, it just it it, it varies. Very so I mean, uh, it's 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 much. Uh, I think I think it's much shorter print runs, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and and I do a lot of digital. Uh, which is not Xerox color copying. This is high-end digital right. printing, right. which is uh, which, which is is pretty much the same as offset printing, but mm -hmm. it allows for quicker turnarounds, and that's mm -hmm. uh, and that's and smaller important. quantities too. Yeah. Smaller quantities, and more cost efficient. You know, a thousand, two thousand runs uh, max, kind of thing. Um, but you know, handling. Anywhere from as small as sort of a hundred, two hundred quantity, and and doing it very, very well and very quickly. So, you yeah, know, next day turnaround, personalize it, mm -hmm. personalized, stunning yeah. results, and 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 I do a lot. So, and 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 the thing is that from a marketing perspective, it's brilliant. Uh, and 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 like you you touched on, Paul, the personalization of print is <laughs> is. is <laughs> Power us up. <laughs> oh, now, now we're distracted. That's even better than Cookie Monster. <laughs> I find that about 45 minutes is his limit, and then he just needs to be in my face again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why these blabs can't go past an hour, Max. <laughs> I, I think um, I'd like to say, I, I think when you look back at the history of the world, it's always action and reaction. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment. Um, and if you go back to like the late nineties, all the work that's so heavily digital and heavily produced by computer, um, you know, the pixel was everywhere and gradually we've started to see a lot more hand drawn, hand created elements, um, you know, much more organic looking stuff coming into design to now a point where we see those as bits in the toolbox that we can pick and choose from. And I'd like to think that the whole digital physical thing is going to reach that point where people are just going to see digital and physical as two tools in the same box. And that maybe we get people involved or get them interested on their mobiles, on the little screen, and we <laughs> then take their attention away from that towards something bigger or more involving or, you know. And um, I, I think that we're probably getting towards that stage now where people are seeing it not as digital physical but they're seeing it as as these two things can work together can be mixed together they serve different purposes right well, right well, that's exciting every, too mm. I, I mean to a certain extent what you're talking about it's been around like um the the whole drawing and and freehand and things in terms from a uh design marketing agency 
you know, that, that's carried on. The, the, the thing is, though, that what we see on social media is something completely different. I think we uh, we, we tend to um, or, or that that side of of design, you know, like you're saying that drawing upon uh, our sketching, our, our freehand skills um, tends to not be shown. We just tend to see these uh, very kind of cold, boring, um, typeface driven, um, non-creative, see I'm grumpy, um, <laughs> uh, uh, design with a lack of... Right, come on, you're doing so well. Don't drag us <laughs> down now. I'm okay, so so I can read back positive. <laughs> so much sketching going on. There is so much sketching going on in the background and, and in the foreground and, and, and using you know, use, using sketch and, and 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 drawing as part of design. We we see it out there in advertising all the time. It's been it, it hasn't stopped. It's just we don't see it very much. I don't think on social media. That social media bubble again. Yeah, yeah. The social media bubble was, was what I was going to touch on because I think when you were talking about that earlier and you were saying, you know, we. We see all this stuff online and, and we think, oh, my God, there's a crisis. It all looks the same and all this. But but the real world is a totally different place. That, that, you know? That's the reason why we have things like Inktober. I mean, yeah. you know, Inktober is a reaction to the to digital. Yeah. Really, right. really, we, we've been inking forever. I mean, and we, we, we always draw. It's just online. It's kind of like we just don't see it as much. So people come up with Inktober, and, and, you know, so we draw something every day and stick it on social media. It's, yeah, it's like a reaction that's against. an amazing thing too the fact that we're able to share like that now in such a hyper you know global right. level is amazing but the truth is it's just carried on it, it hasn't stopped it's just yeah true and actually there's probably more than there used to be because we have these venues now for showing our work and sharing with each other yeah and, yeah. The, and the stuff that we see that we're just inundated with online i i don't think it really reflects reality you know, people that are, are known giving out, you know, quote, design advice on Twitter and have thousands of followers go ask somebody on the street who they are and they have no idea. You know, so I, I love seeing I, I do love seeing um, lately logos that don't look kind of perfect. They kind of look like there was one that appeared in redesign yesterday in the community on Google Plus um, mm -hmm. that I highly recommend everybody go and visit and join. Yes, join. Um, <laughs> You can pay me later. Team of moderators. I'm going to have to put a link uh, to that now. But, but the, uh, there was one there on uh, a television channel. What was that one called? Uh, the TA, uh, TBS. 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 Is that it? Conor yeah. O'Brien, yeah. And it was slightly quirky and slightly kind of not unusual. And, uh, and I quite like the quirky, unusual, not perfect, not ref not refined's not the right word, but uh, slightly different because they kind of stand out from from you know, and 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 I think sometimes as designers we're a little bit too afraid to kind of present things that are not kind of conventional. We want to, you know, uh, uh, we we almost tend to kind of go towards the conventional, what things that should look like perfectly, but we should always be striving to kind of. Um, create things that make us kind of go oh that's different you know there was another one uh merc was it merc or uh that was uh posted stephen yeah the uh, post yeah that one as well oh, was right, kind, right. Of, yeah. kind of weird and way out and and bright like we need a, a link for that would be good too so many times of, these logos you know they're they look better in their in their iterations, you know, their design uh, uh, expansions, I don't know what you call them, you know, uh, beyond just the logo. The logo but, but breaking, just doesn't work. Yeah. But just breaking conventions sometimes, yeah. but, you know, uh, being different, creating something that might on the outside look a little bit awful, a little bit weird, but it stands out and it makes a point and it makes people, you know, just look at it and think. I, and I think that's important. Even if it doesn't work, I like the fact that it's uh, it's pushing the boundaries, you know. And it's like you said, it's it's pushing thought, also making people think. Maybe it doesn't have to be the way I thought it had to be, you know. 
the, the Merck example is an interesting one because when I uh, read about it and I saw the bright colors and I saw the textures and everything, I thought it actually made sense. And I didn't, and, and like, I, I didn't really comment on that in the, um, if somebody has a link to that, it'd be interesting, it'd be good. But when you look at it, you go, oh, oh that's a bit strange. But, uh, but actually, you know, for me personally, and I didn't want to comment in that comment stream in redesign, um, because I kind of liked it. <laughs> so, oh, wh why didn't you want to say that then? Well, we like I, healthy it, debate. It, well, I was just enjoying all the negativity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see. <laughs> that didn't that didn't at all conjure up the Frankenstein it, because I mean we're talking about a pharmaceutical company, dude. You know. Oh, I hate, I hate pharmaceutical. <laughs> I mean, it looks more like MTV to me than a pharmaceutical. Type just, thing. just purely from a design perspective. That that was all. I, I liked it from a design perspective. That, uh, not not necessarily the politics, you know. So that, that <laughs> I, aside, I'm not, I'm not talking about politics. I'm just straight talking about visually. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked like you know something that was conjured up in a laboratory. And if yeah. I were a pharmaceutical did, company, I don't know that that's what message I would want to send. <laughs> but know? but but what you just said is is right. It looks like it was looking at things from a molecular point of view, um, and, un, under a kind of a, a microscope, and um, and displaying that to the world, all those textures and all those colors that 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 you see at that level. Well, and I it definitely kind of do just, applaud that it was something it was different. And the fact that they sold that idea too is amazing. I mean, the yeah. fact that people accepted that as a logo <laughs> yeah. for a big corporate monolith like that, you know, is amazing. So, mm. yeah, there's a lot of positive happening. Um, and uh, I think we're ready to wrap this baby up. What, what, what do you say? Is our fifth lab over with now? Capone says yep. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Capone says feed me. Excellent. <laughs> So I want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, I'm not sure that we uh, really, you know, answer this age old problem these days about, you know, is design better off than it used to be or not? But um, there's a lot to talk about here. Again, it's one of these blabs. I think we could talk for another six hours or six days. But uh, there you go. Can I chip in with a final thought? Final thought, you guys. final thought with Andrew. Uh, I no would say, thought. go ahead, Andrew. Are we in a in a design? Uh, what are, what are the phrases you use? A design heaven or design hell? I'm going to paraphrase. Um, I, I think there's a lot more design around, but there's a lot more knowledge of design around, which means there's a hell of a lot of crap to sift through. But I think I have faith that the the good stuff will the cream will rise to the top, and that uh, ultimately it's going to be good. I, I also think that. Right? With, with with the new generation, this is my final thought. Younger younger people coming on the scene, new ideas, fresh mm. approach, fresh thinking. You know, um, I, I think design is in a healthy position. All right. Well, that's an, a positive look at that too, because I could also say that maybe you know the uh, younger uh, art students getting out of school are just learning how to work the tools and not learning so much about good design anymore. Uh, but maybe that's changing again. Who knows? Hopefully. Catherine, one more f f final thought from you, or uh, are you done? <laughs> um, I'm starving. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. This was my lunch break. Go design your meal. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us once again. Love you guys. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you, everybody else on the side, for joining in. Thank you, everybody. It was a fascinating discussion. All right. <laughs>